you have one of my all-time favorite quotes, which we use, and let's hopefully we'll get it a little bit right. But you said something along the lines of people are crazy when they try and draw inferences that they do from three, five, or even 10 years of an asset or any actively managed fund. 10 years. Can you tell us a little bit what you mean by that and what are some of the consequences? Let me uh, give you an example. And I do this a lot with people where I'm trying to get them to recalibrate what they can learn from returns. And the critical issue here is we don't observe expected returns. We observe realized returns. And for most investors, what they're trying to do is identify the expected return, guess what's going to happen in the future. So one of the many different ways I try to calibrate is to say, imagine, I know that I have the best hedge fund manager in the world. And she delivers after costs, fees, expenses, everything. She delivers an expected alpha of 5% a year. Most of the time it happens, it's an expected 5%. Sometimes she gets unlucky, negative return. So there's randomness in the process. How much randomness? Imagine her hedge fund has equity-like volatility, 20% a year. Okay, so that's kind of the level of volatility of the overall market year by year. So she has equity-like volatility, true 5% alpha before or after fees and expenses. How many years will it take to say, you know, that woman actually has some skill, able to cover her costs and expenses and fees. We don't even need to know she's adding 5%. I just want to know she has some positive contribution after fees and expenses. And what I'm looking for here is, critically, I'm looking for a T-statistica two or an expected T-statistica two. So I just want to be outside the standard of error in this question. How many years will it take that I can observe it and say, okay, I'm guessing this woman really does have skill. I won't embarrass you. If you want, feel free to shoot out a number. I know the answer because I've done enough research and listened to you for long enough. Listeners, come up with a number in your head of what you think is a realistic time horizon to judge this hedge fund manager. All right, you got a number? All right, professor, give us the reveal. Okay, what I actually tell people to do is write a number down. Because as soon as I tell them the answer, they go say, oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So write the number down. I don't think anyone's going to say, yeah, that's what I was thinking when, when you give us the answer. In this particular case, the answer is 64 years. An investment lifetime. It's three investment lifetimes, right? I mean, it's sort of, there's no possibility that this woman is still out there running a hedge fund if it really takes 64 years to figure out, hey, she's really great, probably the best in the world. No possibility. So this is what I mean. It's there's so much randomness in the returns we observe. We're trying to back out what was the expected return. And mostly what we're observing is the unexpected return. It's not futile. If you have long enough, you can learn things. And in some cases, you can learn a lot. For example, if you want to know whether an index fund is doing what they're supposed to do, that's easy because I give you the index that they're supposed to be matching. And then you can look and see what that's doing is it's taking all the noise away. You're able to see what they're actually doing relative to the index and decide, hey, they're doing something good or they're not really selling me an index fund here. So that's a case where you can observe it. Most of the time in the interesting cases, it's mostly noise. I think this is probably. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. One of the biggest mismatches really between investors and not just individuals. So we speak to a lot of professional investors too, and their time horizon almost universally that they look at investments is one to three years. And we do polls and we love to do Twitter polls. And, and I don't want to set you off, but like we do Twitter polls where we ask people say, hey, how long would you give an active manager underperforming their benchmark? before you liquidate the in investment. And, and it's almost the entirety, say one to three years. I said, how long would you be willing to be 
quote, wrong on investment, meaning underperforming a benchmark. Nothing has changed and the manager didn't die. There's no structural shifts, no government regulations, no aliens, no anything. 20% said up to a year and then 50% said up to five years. So everyone's focused on this very short period. And again, like you mentioned, it's just in the short run, a lot of luck and noise. One of my favorite stories many, many years ago, I was teaching at MIT. I got a call from MIT's investment office. They wanted some advice on should they fire a manager? And they described the situation. The manager had been working for another firm, shot the lights out, really great performance, left that firm to set up his own firm. And for the first 18 months, things did not go well. They had horrible returns, but fundamentally, the asset class they were in had horrible returns. The investment group at MIT wanted to know what should they do? Should they fire this manager? And it was a hedge fund, which is relevant for the answer. And I said, well, the way I think about it, if you like them when you hired them, you should love them now. And I see you shaking your head. You know exactly what I mean. But the investment office did not. And what I said was, you've learned essentially nothing about that manager's skill over the last 18 months. All you've learned is your fees are lower. Why are they lower? Because there's a high watermark. They will have to get back to where they started when they invested with the manager once he started his new firm. So they've got what it really was down 30 or 40 percent. They've got a huge run before they have to start paying the 20 out of the two and 20. So if they liked him at two and 20, they should love him at two. They didn't learn anything else or very uh, Granted, you got to learn something, but essentially nothing that would help you make a real decision. And I, I try to emphasize that over and over again. Most of the consultants in the world aren't helpful in this conversation because if they didn't fire somebody after three years, what would they do? Yeah, we'll bring you in every 30 years and evaluate how you did. 